In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about the Mandelbrot set uh, and how to calculate it using Python. So, so what's the Mandelbrot set? It's uh, the set that's uh, pictured here. It's a subset of the complex plane. Uh, and the points that are colored in black, those are elements. Of, those are the points that are, that are elements of the Mandelbrot set. And the points that are uh, blue or other colors, that, those are the points that are outside the set. Uh, it's kind of rather interesting. There's all sorts of uh, you know, very extensive mathematical theory known about the uh, structure of this set. Um, and one kind of key feature that's uh, kind of quite visually quite obvious is that if you look at this little blob here, um, this is uh, this looks like a copy of the Mandelbrot set. Um, you know, it's a copy of the Mandelbrot, a smaller copy of the Mandelbrot set sitting inside the Mandelbrot set. And then the, you, know, you go up to here, that you know, if you looked even closer at these little blobs here and here, you would find that those are also uh, even smaller copies of the Mandelbrot set. It has this uh, fractal property of self-similarity. Um, <clears throat> So uh, let's, let's explain exactly what this uh, uh, what this set is. Okay, so we have to start with a complex number c, and then using that we can define this quadratic polynomial q c of z is z, z squared plus c, uh, and then we uh, we start with zero, uh, and then we apply q c to that. So you get zero squared plus c is just c, and then you apply uh, q c of the, to that again. So you take q c of c, which is c squared plus c. And then you apply QC to that again. So you take your C squared plus C, you square it, and then you add C again. So that uh, ends up giving you a C to the fourth plus 2C cubed plus C squared plus C. And you, you, know, you can carry on doing this. Uh, and you, you know, if you actually try to write the formulae for them uh, as, as polynomials, then they would you know, quickly get extremely complicated. Uh, but uh, you don't actually need the formula as a polynomial because you can just calculate these things. You just... Uh, you just take your first number and you square and add c, square and add c, square and add c again. Okay, so when we, we, we fix a fix parameter c to start with, and we look at the sequence of these values. So you start the sequence c, c squared plus c, you see the fourth plus two c cubed plus c squared plus c, etc. Uh, look at the whole sequence where each time, uh, in each step in the sequence, you take the previous step, you square it and add c. And uh, it turns out there's, uh, well, you could imagine that these, so these, each of these numbers, there's uh, some, you can think of them as being a point in the complex plane, and uh, uh, there's, there's two possibilities for how they can behave. Um, it's possible that they might just kind of stay bounded, they stay within the disk of radius 2, uh, centered at the origin, so the absolute value of qc to the n of 0 is less than or equal to 2 for all n, that's one possibility. Or the other possibility is that the uh, uh, the the um, absolute values they uh, go they you know, diverge to infinity as n increases, and you know, it turns out that there's, there's the only two possibilities. As soon as uh, as soon as one of these values is uh, absolute value bigger than two, then the rest of them they'll get bigger and bigger and they'll go out to infinity. Okay. So uh, so you can ask yourself, I mean, given any you know, for which which values of c do you you have does possibility a occur? Which values of c does possibility b occur? Uh, and the set of those values C for which case A occurs, that is this Mandelbrot set that we drew a picture of. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So we want to uh, we want to calculate this set in Python. We want to we'll use uh, write some Python code. It'll make a picture of the Mandelbrot set, Mandelbrot set for us. Uh, so we need to do a large number of calculations, right? You've got to have you have, you have a, a fine grid. Uh, you have uh, a very large number of points, and then you have to do all these calculations to see which points are inside the Mandelbrot set and which points are outside. And we want to make this uh, make this fast, so we have to uh, use the whole story about vectorized operations uh, and uh, universal functions in NumPy that we uh, we've discussed elsewhere. Um, so that's uh, that's part of the uh, point about doing this particular example. It's good, a good example to illustrate. Uh, how we can speed things up by uh, um, using vectorized operations. Um, but there, and there's, you know, there's kind of a fairly straightforward way to do this in a vectorized manner, but it has a bit of a defect to it, uh, which is like this. You see, if, um, if C is not in M, then you know, these numbers QC to the N0, we, we know they're going to go to zero, go to infinity. That's, uh, that's you know, um, based, into the, uh, based on the discussion we had earlier on this slide. You know, if, if, if the QC to the Ns don't stay within uh, radius 2, uh, then they go off to infinity, uh, and and in practice they get very big very quickly, uh, and then and this is going to cause overflow errors. Right? Uh, if you try and do calculations with number in Python with numbers that are too big, you'll get overflow errors, and uh, yeah, and so we don't we don't we want to somehow avoid that. Uh, so we need to uh, uh, modify our computational strategy a little bit, uh, a slight uh, slightly clever clever trick. 
uh, to avoid uh, dealing with this kind of uh, overflow. Okay, so uh, so here's a notebook, uh, and we're going to do which we're going to do this. So uh, as usual, we're going to uh, import NumPy uh, and uh, matplotlib so that we can draw some pictures. Okay, so here's the here's the most obvious way uh, that we can write a function to test whether a number c is in the Mandelbrot set. Um, so we start uh, we start with z is zero, and then we do a loop, and then at each pass through the loop, we uh, replace we square z and add c, and, and you know, replace uh, replace the value of z by that, and then. Uh, you know, if we find if we find ourselves at a point where the absolute value of z is bigger than two, then we know we're not in the Mandelbrot set, um, so we return zero. Um, and uh, yeah, you can't do can't keep doing this forever. We have to sort of decide how many times we're going to try it. So uh, I put this in as a uh, as an optional argument or argument with the default value of 100. So uh, if we just uh, call this function um, just with a, a single argument of c, then uh, the ma uh, number of iterations will be 100. Uh, and so we go, we do uh, go through this loop, uh, however many times the uh, max iter uh, parameter tells us to do it. Uh, and then if at the end of that we haven't escaped, if the absolute value is um, less than or equal to 2, well, we can't actually guarantee that it's in the Mandelbrot set, but it probably is. Uh, so we're going to return 1. <coughs> uh, um, but uh, here, like I said, I mean, this is not a parallelized thing. Um, we... Uh, or at least not obviously a parallelized thing. We haven't, we haven't paid any attention to making it parallelizable. Um, so what happens if we try and feed in a, uh, a matrix instead? So, um, yeah. so, so let's just try this out, actually. So we can do... Uh, um, Okay, so uh, um, so we do 0.1 plus 0.2j. Remember, uh, Python complex numbers, you have to do j for the square root of minus 1 instead of i. Okay, so there's a, a random point, and then let's do maybe... Okay, so we do 0.1 uh, plus 0.9j, uh, then uh, uh, then it's outside the Mandelbrot set. At 0.6, uh, it's inside. Okay, so let's, uh, so let's try and do it... Um, Yeah, with an array. Okay, so uh, okay, you might think, well, let's let's run through it like this. We'll try and uh, calculate you know, several several different points. We might be interested in whether they're in the Mandelbrot set. We'll calculate them all together as an array. Uh, And we get an error. So the error says here, value error, truth value of an array with more than one element is ambiguous. Yeah, that's because we've got this if clause here. Yeah, and so uh, it's perfectly okay. Um, well, it's also, uh, we uh, <coughs> well, it's a bit funny that uh, yeah, I mean, the C is a, 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 a vector of length three. Um, and we, we start with Z as the number zero, which is not, yeah, it's a bit funny because here we're going to do z squared plus c, so z squared is going to be a, a, a vector of length 3, and then we're adding the... Um, yeah, well, sorry, yeah, c, c is the, the c that we're adding is a vector of length 3, and the z is just a number. And okay, So in fact, mate, Python will make sort of sort of make sense of that, but it's still it's certainly funny, um, not a very natural thing to do, just to add a number onto a vector. Um, but then but then we have more trouble at this next stage here, that do we say, if the absolute value of z is bigger than 2. So... The way that uh, Python interprets that, it looks so uh, you, you've got your z's, uh, it's an array of length three, and it checks whether each element in turn is uh, has absolute value bigger than two, and so you get a uh, an array of truth values, so an array of length three. Every el every element in that array is either true or false, uh, depending on whether the absolute value of the uh, corresponding entry in the in the z vector is uh, is bigger than two or not. Um, but then you can't if you've got an array, a, a list of uh, of true and false values, you can't use that in an if statement, right? For an if statement, you, know, you have to either do the thing or not do the thing. Uh, you have to have a single truth value. Um, so that doesn't work. Okay, so uh, um, so we can't uh, can't do this Mandelbrot test A thing um, uh, for for an array. Um, so here's a, here's a slightly different version, uh, a version that's um, um, more supposed to be vectorized. Um, <coughs> yeah, uh, 
so uh, again, and so here, um, what we do is we, we don't uh, we don't bother uh, putting in a, a we don't bother sort of trying to test in the middle of the loop whether we're going to return or not. Um, we're going to instead um, just uh, run through the full number of iterations in every case, uh, and then at the end of the day, uh, we're going to uh, yeah, we check. Um, so that gives us a vector. Uh, and then we look. At, then we're going to do return this uh, abz less than or equal to two, which is a, this is going to be an array of two truth values, and it's convenient to convert the truth values to from true and false to zero and one, which we can do just by multiplying by one. Okay, that's uh, okay. So let's uh, let's maybe try this one. Um, so we. <clears throat> so, uh, um, so, there, so we feed in this array here, and it comes out uh, with an answer, array 100. Zero, zero. That means that the first point is inside the Mandelbrot set because you've got a 1, the second one's outside because you've got a 0, third one's outside because you've got a 0. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of okay, um, but uh, I mean, this is, uh, again, it's a kind of slightly, uh, uh, slightly unsatisfactory to just have z being the number 0 here, actually, so let's uh, um, It's a slightly tidier way to do it. So this will mean that uh, C is going to be, uh, as here we had an array, and then this is going to make uh, Z be uh, an array of zeros as the same shape as the as the C. So uh, it's a little bit tidier, um, but still we have this kind of issue with the overflow. Um, so how are we going to uh, avoid this issue with the overflow? Uh, <clears throat> and so we're going to do, uh, do a, a slightly more complicated approach here. So here, uh, in this case, uh, um, our th third version, uh, we're going to have not just a of um, the array z. So the z is the kind of uh, is the array of points we were, we were keeping track of orig originally. Um, but uh, we're also going to have this other um, other matrix as well, other vector that's called M. Okay, so uh, z and z, m, and c, they're all going to be arrays of the same shape. Uh, they could be you know, vectors, so just uh, sort of like. Uh, you could have a hundred different values of z, and then uh, you know, you know, your z would be an array of length 100, your c and your m would also be arrays of length 100. Or, in fact, what's more natural uh, is you, you, know, you could have a whole grid of possible values of z. You know, it could be like a, a thousand by thousand matrix of z's, and then your c would also, or thousand by thousand matrix of c's for your uh, initial points you want to check, uh, and then you've got a thousand by thousand uh, matrix of z's, thousand by thousand matrix of m's. And the way we set it up, we're going to start with Z being just zeros. Um, so we want to make it zeros of the same shape as C. So one convenient way to do that is just to take C and multiply it by zero. And then you want M to be an array of ones of the same shape as C. So uh, again, a convenient way to do that is just take your matrix of zeros and add one to it. Uh, and notice that, I mean, this is a this is going to broadcast sum. I mean, the, uh, so you start with a matrix of some uh, fancy shape, and then you, you add one. So uh, the kind of broadcasting mechanism converts that one to a, a, a big matrix of the same shape as Z before you add them. So the effect is just to add one to every entry in the uh, in the matrix in the array Z. But like Z was just an array of zeros. You add one to a wall, you just get an array of ones. Okay. So now we're going to walk through the loop. Uh, we go K is the uh, you know, zero to up to max iter minus one, uh, and uh, so we're sort of yeah. You might think we're going to do z is z squared plus c. Uh, that's the sort of standard uh, step in the Mandelbrot iteration. But I, I'm not always going to do that. I'm going to do um, m times uh, z squared plus c and one minus m times ten. Um, so an m is uh, the way it's going to work out is m is always going to be all the entries in m are always going to be zero or one. So if the entries in m are zero. Uh, then, uh, then this this first term here with the m get is just uh, is just zero, and then the second term uh, is ten times one minus zero, which is ten. Uh, so in the cases where m is zero, this uh, this formula is just going to have the effect that z is get set get set equal to ten. Um, <clears throat> but uh, if m is equal to one, then you get, you know, the the opposite thing happens, and the ten times one minus m term is just zero. You ignore that, and then you. Uh, and, the, and you're multiplying by one here. So in the case where m is one, you're just getting z is z squared plus c. Uh, in the places where uh, m is zero, uh, you're just getting uh, z is ten. Uh, and then uh, and then you set z to be set m 
to be uh, ab z less than or equal to 2. So remember, z is probably some kind of matrix uh, of uh, numbers. And so this expression ab z less than or equal to 2 gives us a, a matrix of truth values. So matrix of trues and falses, uh, depending on you know, which, of, which of the elements in the matrix have absolute value less than or equal to 2. And then we multiply it by 1 to convert the false to 0 and the true to 1. Okay. Um, so what, what effect does this have? You see, this means that, uh, you know, um, so in the places where the absolute value of z is less than or equal to 2, then you know, your m is going to be... Uh, um, your m is going to be equal to 1, and so you're just seeing the normal uh, Mandelbrot rule, z is z is equal to c. Uh, in the case where uh, uh, m is equal to, uh, to 0, that's, that's the case where uh, the absolute value of z is, is bigger than 2. Um, so there you're, getting, uh, you know, uh, you're just getting z equals 10. So the effect of, effect of these two lines together, you, know, you, you keep updating... Uh, Z according to the normal uh, Mandelbrot rule, Z is Z squared plus C, except that uh, if you ever get to a point where uh, uh, absolute value of Z is bigger than 2, then you kind of stop doing the Mandelbrot iteration, you just set Z equal to 10 and just keep it being equal to 10 the whole time. Uh, so that means that you, you're never going to get really big numbers, and you avoid the overflow. Uh, and then you know, at the end of the day, once you've been through all this loop ball, you just return M, right? So M is the... Uh, um, uh, so m is again a matrix of the same shape as z and the way because we've done this m is ab z less than or equal to 2 at each stage uh, at the end of the, the end of the iteration uh, m is going to be equal to 0 in all the slots where uh, um, <coughs> you know, uh, so m is, equal to, m is equal to 1 in all the slots where the absolute value of z has been 2 less than or equal to 2 the whole time so that's m is 1 in the slots that are actually in the Mandelbrot set and m is 0 for the other ones um, yeah. so uh, so we can go back and uh, yeah, do our little example here with just a uh, you know, just three values. Uh, oh, we haven't uh, executed this loop this yet. So um, yeah, so now we get uh, the correct answer one zero zero because this first vec first number actually is in the Mandelbrot set and the other two aren't. So we get one zero zero. Uh, but now we don't have any overflow error. <coughs> But uh, yeah, so now that, that was just calculating uh, three values. But uh, to make a de de make a good picture, we need many more values. So we're going to take a thousand by thousand matrix of e equally spaced points, uh, and then we're going to uh, uh, and we check which ones of those are in the Mandelbrot set, and, that'll, and then we can make a picture out of them. Um, <clears throat> okay, so how do we do that? So. Uh, um, uh, so firstly, let, let's just. Uh, Let's do these first few lines. So here we're going to do a thousand by a thousand, or when we actually do it properly, we can do a thousand by a thousand. But let's just do three for the minute. Okay. Um, so, so we've done x's as uh, np dot lin space. Um, so this is evenly spaced points between minus two and 0 0.4, and there's going to be four of them. And so it's going to be minus two, uh, minus one point two, minus 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I've got this reshape thing. So reshape one n plus one that makes it into a row vector. Okay, so a row vector of uh, shape one by four. Um, Okay, and then for y's, you see that's the same kind of thing. We're going for y that minus one point two up to one point two, four values. Uh, and we're going to reshape it. A bit. Here we're going to reshape it to shape four by one. So this actually becomes a column vector. Okay, so you know, the row vector of x's, a column vector of y's, uh, and then we're going to do c's is x's plus uh, j times the y's. Okay, um, so uh, so yeah. And so what's happening here when you try and add a uh, um, yeah, add a row vector to a column vector? Then you get to do the kind of broadcasting thing. And so. Uh, uh, you get a, you can actually get a matrix, a four by four matrix, uh, in which uh, all the real parts are kind of given by the uh, um, uh, given by the, the x values here, uh, and the uh, imaginary parts are given by uh, these y's here. So uh, you're basically you're taking this uh, row vector and you're adding on j times this column vector, uh, which has this effect here. So we've got a this is a kind of grid of equally spaced points uh, in the uh, in the complex plane. Um, <clears throat> Okay, but we're going to do it with many more. We're going to do a thousand of them, well, a thousand by a thousand, so we can actually get a million points altogether. 
Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, so we've got quite a lot of work to do to uh, to test uh, which ones of those lie in the Mandelbrot set. Um, but uh, because it's all uh, vectorized, it's still nonetheless uh, quite quick. And then, uh, um, yeah, and then we do this uh, plt.im show, which uh, converts the the answer to a uh, into a picture. And uh, so here's here's our picture of the Mandelbrot set. <laughs> 